be the first to say it. Really grateful that you guys are here today. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. We're going to dive in, worship. If you're in the lobby, come on in. The weather's better in here. 
than out there. Um, yeah, today's going to be a good day. Um, because of all that God has done for us, for you, and for me, uh, He's made us new, He made us whole, He's made us alive. We respond by pouring out our praise and worshiping our King Jesus. You guys ready? Here we go.
on the cartridger whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the Moses the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. I'm calling on the God Mary, whose favor rests upon the Lord. With you all things are possible I'm calling on the God David He made a shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath But I've got my own giant
Holy 
Amen. He is holy and he is worthy. Uh, welcome to church. Welcome to Crossroads. My name is Mark. Again, if you weren't in here, happy Mother's Day to you. For the first time amongst many, you deserve to hear it a lot. So we love you. We're grateful for you. Um, find five people in the room and say, your mom is awesome. And then have a seat. Good morning, Crossroads. If you could find your way to your seat and pull out your bulletin. There's a few things I want to know over with you. Thank you, worship team. That's, ah, I love that song. I just got the tears out of my eyes, so I'm going to stop right now. But welcome, Crossroads. We're glad that you are here today. Happy Mother's Day to all the mamas. And thank you to all the mom mentors and all the, the mothers that have influenced us over the years. Thank you for all you do for us. Welcome to Crossroads. If it's your first time, you're a guest with us. We're grateful that you're here. We hope that our service is a blessing to you today, for you today. If you would look at your bulletin, you'll see there's this little flap. We call this the connection card. If you're a guest, please let us know that you were here. Just fill out the details at the end of service when the offering baskets come by. Drop that into the offering basket and we'll take it from there. We'd love to know that that you are here today. We hope this service is a blessing to you. If you look on the back of your bulletins, you'll see at the very top, you can learn about Crossroads, what moves us and motivates us, our vision, our mission, our rhythms here at Crossroads. We're in a process right now of transitioning to a new location, as you know. Just right around the corner, our first service will be June 9th. We have some things that are happening before then. So I wanna share with you three things. First thing is this, over the past two days, we've had over 40 people show up to the new location, working inside and outside, doing amazing work to prepare that building, that spot, that property for what God has in store for us there. So thank you for all of you that risked your back and your skin with the poison ivy and all those type of things. Thank you for, for all your help. Listen, we still have some other things to do though. As a matter of fact, over the next two weeks, we're going inside and we're gonna start painting. We got some areas that need some love, some paint on the walls. And if that's your wheelhouse and you'd like to step in and help with us, we got all kinds of things to do. As a matter of fact, there's a QR code right here. This is a sign up to help. Over the next two weeks, we have different options and opportunities for anyone to step up and step in and serve. If you don't take your phones out and just scan that QR code, and bookmark it, bookmark it, because it's gonna be live. We're gonna update that as we go. We would love for you to join with us, to team up with us as we start preparing that place for the next season here at Crossroads. Along those lines, as we transition over to the new space, you're gonna love it. Not only will we have new opportunities for people to come and see and discover who Jesus is, but we also have opportunities for you to step up and step in and help serve at Crossroads. We have spaces for our kids' ministry, for our student ministry, and our guest services ministry. We'd love for you to step in and up into that service. If that's something that you would like to do, I would pray about it. If it's something you'd like to do, here's what I'll give you two options. On that connection card, there's a little, a little section that says, find a place to serve. If you do us a favor, if you want to step in, guest services, children, students, just sign one of those, sign all of them. Write your name and your phone number, drop that in in the offering basket at the end, we'll take it from there. 
If you don't want to write it down after service today or next week, grab one of our volunteers, guest services, students, or uh, our children's ministry. We'd love to help you take your next steps as we move over and we're going to be doing a tour and training at the beginning of June. So I want to invite all of you to step into that. Again, we're grateful that you're here at this time. I'm going to invite our pastor, Pastor Brady, up here to continue our service. You guys give him some love. He's fresh and back in the energy. We love you, Pastor. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Yeah, so good to see you in the space today. Uh, what a joy. Uh, happy Mother's Day again. Uh, we're going to do parent-child dedications this morning. Uh, we only have one, and what a perfect day to do that. Uh, but the Kaufmans are coming. Uh, this is John and Martha, and it looks like Anna is elsewhere, and we got Sage. All right, so uh, welcome these folks. Yeah. Mark, um, if somebody's in the back of the room, can you bring me a handheld? That would be fantastic here in a moment. I'm going to give these guys some love and opportunity to share some things about themselves and introduce. So um, here's what we do, every child parent dedication, right? Uh, we have some slides we read, sort of a liturgy, uh, just to say, hey, this is what these guys are committing to. Uh, we believe uh, that Sage, uh, we, we pray that she would come to faith in Jesus Christ one day. And uh, these moms and dads are dedicating, saying, hey, we're going to raise them in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. And uh, thank you, Ms. Tyler Copeland. Um, and so they're going to, we're going to read some statements. I'm going to read some statements. They're going to say, I do, or we will, or I will, or however it comes out. And then there's going to be an opportunity at the end for us as a spiritual family to say, hey, we're with you, and we're behind you, and we're coming alongside you. All right? So read with me. Do you trust in the person and work? of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin and the fullness of life. We do. Fantastic. Uh, do you commit to give your children repeated opportunity to respond in faith to Jesus Christ, relying on God's grace and mercy and prayer and perseverance to love and to lead your children? We do. Fantastic. And do you commit to generously provide for the physical and emotional and spiritual needs of your kiddos? Awesome. Church, this is our turn. You ready? As a church family, do we commit to partner with these families through prayer, community, and service to ensure that their children have repeated opportunity to experience the life-changing reality of Jesus Christ? Yes. Fantastic. John, you have a few words this morning. Uh, real, we've already been introduced, so I'm just going to pass it over to Martha, and she can, <laughs> she, she's going to explain um, Sage's name and kind of how we came to her name uh, in the process of, yeah, uh, when she got born. And she got born. <laughs> I'm from Arkansas. <laughs> um, each of our kids has a verse that we're praying for them. And Sage's verse is Psalm 52, 8, which is, but I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. So flourishing in the Hebrew actually just means green. So that's sage. And then God's unfailing covenant love in Hebrew is hesed. And so that's her middle name, hesed. So that's our prayer for her is that she would flourish, that she would know God, and that she would trust in his unfailing love. Love it, love it, love it. Well, I'm going to ask you guys to come to the floor here. Church family, you come. We're going to pray over. Community, family, friends. Oh, I love it. Look at this love. good stuff. All right, here's what we're going to do. As I pray over the Kaufmans and little, little Miss Sage and Anna, big sister, I want you to pray as well, okay? Uh, so let's just lift them up. Father in heaven, um, just thank you for my brother and sister in Christ. 
I pray for John and Martha that you would give them incredible wisdom, uh, perseverance, strength, fortitude, grit, all the things that parents need, God, to uh, love their babies, pursue them, care for them, and, and the things that they pledged before you this morning. And so, God, would you give them grace? Would you give them mercy? Would you give them all the things that they need to uh, raise these little girls to love you? God, we pray for Anna. We pray that you would just uh, continue to push her towards yourself that she would love you, call you Lord. And we pray that for Sage, God, that she would grow into her name. God, we we thank you for her life. We thank you for the gift of children. And we pray for blessing over her that she too would call you Lord. Uh, God, we need you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we pray in your mighty name today that you would speak to us. And uh, we need you in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Well, the man uh, came home uh, with a friend one day uh, to see his wife. Uh, He came into the house and he greeted her with her of, hey, babe, uh, you look beautiful. Uh, You're pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, it was really, really good. He asked his wife how a day went. Uh, She said good and uh, that she looked pretty. And then after they embraced, what happened? She served him dinner. And uh, after dinner was over, he looked at her and says, hey, that was a great meal. I'm so grateful. Uh, Thank you for doing that. And the visitor, the guy that he brought home with him, uh, pulled him aside when they were alone later. And he looked at him and says, hey, man, you treat your wife like amazing. Like, why in the world do you do that? And he says, well, first of all, she deserves it. Right, ladies? Come on. And, and he said, also, because it makes my marriage a lot happier, okay? Uh, and impressed, this visitor decided to adopt the idea. So he goes home to his own wife, okay? And uh, he said to his wife, hey, honey, you look wonderful. Like, you look amazing. In fact, he went over the top and he just said, sweetheart, uh, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. And all of a sudden, this wife, she just burst into tears, Okay? And he was bewildered, bewildered, perplexed. He's like, why in the world are you crying? What's going on? She goes, hey, it's just been a crazy day, right? Like Billy got in trouble at school. He failed a test. And so that's been chaotic. The refrigerator went out and I just bought new groceries all fresh and they're ruined. And now you come home drunk, (laughs) right? Now, I, I suppose the reason we, we laugh so hard is because there's so much truth in that, right? Not, not about husbands coming home drunk, okay, let's hope not. Um, but that this idea of encouragement and praise uh, to our spouses is so difficult and maybe so foreign to us. And uh, I start with that story today because here's what I want to do. Um, moms in the room, I want to honor you today, right? Moms, we want to honor you. We want to just give a, just a word of encouragement over you to say you're doing a great work and what you're doing and how you're doing it is so important and it's so valuable. And, and the reason that's so important is because here's the deal. We live in a world today, right, where that doesn't happen so much. I mean, we're confused about everything. We're confused about, hey, moms and uh, gender and where we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to go. And we don't celebrate because we're trying to be so politically correct and so just, you know, hey, we just want to make sure we accommodate everybody. But moms, I just want to say to you, you are doing a great job. And this sermon, okay, is about honoring motherhood. But really, as we honor motherhood, what we're doing is we're making much of Jesus too, all right? We're able to make much of Jesus. Why? Because he designed motherhood. He he created motherhood. He blessed it from his very incarnation in Mary's womb. And then he goes to a cross and he looks out. He sees his mom and he sees John. And what does he say? He says, John, behold your mother. Take care of mom, right? Jesus, the Bible, it honors motherhood. And when we do that, we make much of Jesus. And here's what I want to do. What I want to honor in this message, okay, is the biblical calling 
on a woman's life to weave the fabric of family life out of commitment to a husband, all right, and a life together. I want to honor moms and the commitment to her children and training them. Mom, you have a great work. You have a hard work that never ends. Uh, I want to honor in this message a commitment to her work, your work, moms, inside the home, but also outside of the home. I want to honor in this message a commitment to Jesus Christ and to his glory. And in other words, I want to honor the biblical calling that makes up marriage, that makes up motherhood and at home management that we practice in the context of radical Christian discipleship. Right? You realize, moms, you are the front runner along with your husband. Or single moms, you are the front runner in, in, in discipling your children to know and to love and to embrace Jesus Christ. Now, here's what we know. There are millions of single women. Uh, many will stay single. And this is what I would say. There's a grace of God for that, right? There's a grace of God for that, a very special grace. And for some, even in their singleness, maybe even a calling. There are women who are single mothers. And can I just say, if there's any single moms in the room today, we honor you. Like, you're my heroes, right? Come on, I see you, right? Like, we love you. We embrace you because, wow, you do a hard work, right? And the marriage element in the calling I just described sometimes can be painfully missing, and we miss that. But here's the deal. There's a special grace of God for that as well, right? How about this? There are women who are married and cannot, all right, um, or with their husbands choose not uh, to have children. And I would just say there's a special grace for that. And then there's these moms, like superhuman moms, right, who weave together their mothering and their marriage and home management and part-time or full-time uh, employment outside the home. And, and some moms because they have to, right, like single moms. Other moms because they see it as a part of their calling and they found creative ways to uh, interlace schedules so much as not to compromise the core commitments of their home. Right? They're, they're, they're leading there. And others, sadly, because they don't have any core commitments, right, to supporting their husbands or pouring their lives into children and managing the home for the sake of Jesus, right? They're simply absorbed in the values of this world that says, hey, uh, I've got to do this because this is what the socials tell me. This is what media tells me with no biblical framework. And so here's the aim of this sermon. Here's my goal of this sermon, very simply, is to ad not to address all of those circumstances. We'd be here at 2 o'clock, uh, and, and you might get into lunch by then, okay? But that, nobody's biting. Okay, good, good. Uh, my aim is just to encourage the women. It's to encourage the women, because there's millions of you, right? Millions who believe that God's call on your life is marriage, uh, the joyful support of a husband and partnership is you display what the relationship between Jesus Christ and his church looks like. Uh, motherhood, the transmission of a God-centered, Christ-treasuring vision of life to your children. Where, hey, I'm leading and managing in the home the creation of a beautiful and simple place. This living organism, if you will, called a home which becomes not only for your family, but also for the community, a refuge of Christ's peace and grace to the city around us. In other words, you, you show me a great home. You show me a healthy mom. You show me a healthy woman. You show me a healthy marriage, and I'll show you a lighthouse in our city that brings in community where people go, one, that's attractive, right? So ladies, if you hear nothing else that I say today, moms, if you hear nothing else, uh, I pray that there be no guilt or shame put on you as we walk through Proverbs 31. My prayer for you is that you would fall more in love with Jesus. Because when you fall more in love with Jesus and you follow him and you're connected with him and you do whatever it takes to stir your affections for him, you become the aroma and the attractiveness of Christ. And that is a blessing not only for your husband or your family, but it is a blessing, I would say, for our community and our city. So here's the diagnostic question, ladies, right? Are you following and serving and moving and walking with Jesus? What, what is stirring your affections for him? And I pray that you would do that and lean in this morning, all right? Uh, here's the need. We, we need moms who love Jesus more than a mom who does everything right, okay? Right, what pressure on moms? 
Right? You, you look at the pressure that is put on mom, and, and, and I would just say this, you are going to fail your children. Amen? All right, Mother's, or Father's Day is in a month, okay? We'll go after the guys later, okay? Promise, come back. But moms, guess what? You're gonna, you're gonna fail your children. Whether you overreact or whether you overprotect, whether you waste our time, whether you pass on a bad habit, whether you discipline in anger or you refuse to discipline at all, we will make mistakes. You will sin and you will be intermingled with even on our best efforts, the sin of your life, right? That's just reality. So trying to be the perfect mother for our children will always leave you a little bit discouraged. It'll leave you a little bit guilt-ridden and weary And this is what I would encourage you. Our children, your children need you to quit fixating on your successes and failures and start fixating your gaze on Christ. Right? The most attractive woman, the and the most attractive woman for me is sitting right over there. Come on, somebody, right? But but the most attractive woman, the most attractive mother is the mother or woman who is pursuing Jesus Christ, who her gaze is fixed on Jesus and she is following. And when we're doing this, how? By the shaping of our lives with his word and making focused time with him a priority, right? I get giddy when I walk through the house and I see my wife with her Bible open, right? And she's the early riser in our household, right? She's like up with the chickens, okay? And she's got her coffee. She's in there doing her Bible. She's doing that. And I'm just like, okay, mm, come on, somebody, right? Like she's already turning me on and it's not even nighttime. Come on, right? Anybody? Sorry. I'm getting that look that, (laughs) it's not the good look, okay? Mm. Here's the deal. Your time with Jesus, right, ladies, it'll be different through the seasons, okay? Uh, Like two weeks from now, we start empty nesting. Come on, somebody, right? Two weeks, right, we graduate the baby, okay? Okay. one in a second degree, uh, one in the middle of a degree, and one headed off. So uh, I'm poor, but my wife and I will be alone, okay? That'll be good, okay? We, so send money. We don't have any money, but, but anyway, we're going to be empty nesting. We'll do lots of long walks together, okay? Um, I, I don't know where I was going with that other than, um, yeah, 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 here's the deal. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. So. Oh, the seasons look different. That's what I was saying. Um, yeah, whatever season you're in, moms, give yourself grace, right? Uh, I think about, you know, Christy had a stay-at-home season there for, for a few years, and, you know, it's like, how do you carve out minutes or an hour to have a quiet time when you got two or three kids under five? It's like impossible, right? And so, like, where do you carve out time to spend with Jesus? Maybe it's, you know, uh, four times a year where you get away a day and you farm out the kids and, you know, say, okay, husband, tag, you're it, right? Go for it. You, you, they'll survive, right? M- maybe it's just stirring your affections for Jesus through podcasts or uh, through the Bible reading over you. Whatever that season looks like, I just want to encourage you to lean in and find him. All right. Uh, my text this morning is Proverbs 31. Um, we're going to be reading verse 30. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Now, I want you to notice the unusual context of of this chapter. Those of you who know the Old Testament, maybe you've been around Bible study or you know Proverbs 31, uh, it's it's a beautiful chapter because primarily it's an acrostic, okay? Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen an acrostic, written acrostic, know what acrostic is if you went to, you know, 10th grade English, but it's a poem where the first letter of each line, it spells out a word. And in verses, let's see, uh, what is it? Verses um, 22, excuse me, verses 10 through 31 is an acrostic here that we find. And I, I wrote you acrostic this morning. It's the word mother. Okay, here you go. All right. Uh, M is for the million of things she gave me. Okay, moms give a lot. My mom's in the house today. O means only that she's growing old. All right, sorry mom, but true. Okay, uh, Psalm 90, come on. Uh, T is for the tears where uh, she saved me. All right, shedding to save me. Uh, H is for the heart as pure gold. 
E is for her eyes with love light shining, and R means right, and right she will always be. And all, all people who ever had a mother said, <laughs> amen, right? That's an acrostic. Why do people write acrostics? Um, they write acrostics because something in them, um, I don't know, it brings life. That poetry to say, hey, I want to praise someone. I want to give attributes to them. All right, and that's what's happening in Proverbs 31. And verses 10 through 31 is an acrostic. Every verse begins with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. If you've studied Hebrew, you know there are 22 uh, different uh, letters of the ha- Hebrew alphabet. And this is helpful to know because it tips us off that the, the author is not building, if you will, an argument like Paul does in Romans, all right, where he's going, this is exactly the way he, it should go. In fact, it, it's kind of like uh, John Piper uses the phrase of, hey, he's stringing pearls together. And so he's stringing pearls together here of showing you, hey, here's what a godly mom looks like. Here, here's a tapestry, here's a painting, here's a great piece of art of what it could look like. And he, he set himself to the task, as he says in verse 30, that his goal is, is to praise the woman who fears God. To praise the woman who fears God. And he does this by saying 22 different praiseworthy things. Therefore, um, here's what I would say. I want to do a sermon based this morning on the scripture aimed to accomplish these things. First one is this. It should aim to inspire women to fear the Lord. I pray that you walk away, ladies. Right? Hey, I want to fear the Lord. I want to serve him. Secondly, it should inspire others, especially husbands and children, to praise women who fear the Lord. Hey, husbands, when's the last time you praised your wife? Hey, children, when's the last time you gave genuine praise to your mother? Not because it's Mother's Day and you have social uh, pressure to go buy a last-minute card, throw some notes in it, and then upload it and say, oh, yeah, Mom, we love you. No, no, no. When's the last time you've praised your mom for who she is and what she has done and pressed into your life? I, I would just say this. What makes a great woman, right? Single guys in the room, what makes a great woman? What's the woman that you're, uh, you're seeking and you're pursuing? Teenagers, what does your crush look like? Who is the woman that you're pursuing? College student, who is the one you're dating? What does that look like? Uh, the world tells us all kinds of things, right? Well, they got to be intelligent. They got to be beautiful. They got to be sexy. They got to have this. They got to have that. And, and we get this laundry list and this pressure of here's what a woman looks like. But hey, what does a godly woman look like? Who should you pursue? And how should that shape your life? Thirdly, it should contain praise for a godly woman. Okay? It should contain praise for the godly woman. Now, to accomplish that, i got to do a couple things this morning. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Right? Because that always gets weird. Like there's a positive way to fear the Lord and there's a negative way to fear the Lord. Why is it so important that we praise a woman who fears the Lord? And how can you tell if a woman fears the Lord? What, what does that actually look like in action? So pastor, how, what do I do there? So let, let's look at this. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Verse 30, which is our anchor verse. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, that's the woman we should praise. Okay. So what does it mean to experience the fear of the Lord? Let's look at Exodus chapter 20, okay? We're going to go back to the beginning of what is Israel's, the nation Israel, the Jewish people, their national life. And in Exodus chapter 20, after giving the Ten Commandments, here's what goes down. It says, now when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, right? What a picture, right? That's pretty crazy. The people were afraid and they trembled. Of course they did. And they stood far off and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but let God not speak to us lest we die. Right? This is what they're feeling. And Moses said to the people, do not fear for God has come to test you and that the fear of him may be before you. Why does he want them to fear that you may not sin? Right? We need to meditate on such hard text, right? Do not fear you're being tested. You only pass the test here, Moses is saying, if you don't fear. Yet God desires that the fear of him always be before your eyes. You pass the test, in other words, in another way of saying it, by actually fearing the Lord. And the text provides the distinctions necessary to make, the, the, to, uh, make sense out of it. 
You see, the fear that Moses was telling them about was um, to get rid of the fear of coming close to God and hearing his voice. And the fear that Moses wanted them to keep was the fear of disobeying God and moving towards sin. You see the difference? Right? It's two different ways of looking at it. The fear of igniting God's wrathful um, against, uh, just his wrath against sin ought not to drive us away from God, but it drives us to God strictly for mercy. Right? That he, we see that he loves us. Let, let me give you an illustration of this. Um, in the Treywick house, we have a really big dog. Anybody? Right? Anybody ever met Jax? I told you he's really big. My beautiful bride. Uh, this is the couch upstairs. It's one of the two pieces of furniture that he's allowed to get on, all right, in the name of Jesus, much to my chagrin, okay? Um, we should have named him Harry, okay? Because uh, he just leaves hair like a cow everywhere he goes, okay? Uh, but that is Jax, the German shepherd. What is he, eight or nine now? Anybody? Nine? All right, yeah. He follows my wife around the house for everything, okay? He tolerates me because I feed him occasionally, okay, when she's gone. Uh, the middle picture is just him being Jax. Uh, and then the picture on the right, I'll explain here in a moment. But, but just think about this for just a moment. Um, Jax is, if you've never met him, is, is kind of intimidating, Certainly if you wear a brown cap or have like FedEx or, you know, or the Amazon guy. And if you approach our house with a hat on, he goes crazy, all right? And if you're ever leaving our house, you can see his claw marks in the sheetrock, okay? And I've painted over no less than a dozen times to be presentable as you walk out. And it's just like, finally, baby, I ain't doing it again, all right? When the dog goes to doggy heaven, all right, we're done, okay? And I'll paint it then, all right? So there you go. Um, and there's like no doggy heaven. It's just heaven, heaven, anybody. <laughs> and that's Randy Alcorn from the book Heaven. And I've preached on that before, so that's another day. Just, just, cats don't go to heaven, but dogs do, all right? So, <laughs> so much. Um, it's good. I, I had a point here. Um, here. Here's the deal. If, if you're coming up new to the house, Jax can be intimidating. But if you've been in the house for a while, Jax is friendly, right? Um, what's crazy is if Jax goes to the backyard and there's little kids, okay, and they start taking off running, what's Jax going to do? Jax is going to chase them. And because he's so big, 100 pounds plus, like he's intimidating and scary, he starts barking. If you're another dog, it's totally over, okay? Uh, and, and so what do you do? You, you're fearful of jacks. And if I say, no, 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 don't run, don't run, don't run, right? The, the goal would be not to run and jacks would just, you know, lick you to death and you can put your arms around him, okay? Just the fear of the Lord. As we're thinking through this, though, I mean, in this situation, our family acts like Moses, and we say to the Israelites, the specific family, hey, don't fear, but draw near. And you're like, well, he's barking at me, and he's chasing me, okay? But keep the fear of the dog, i.e. the fear of the Lord, before your eyes, lest you try to run away or kick the rocks, and you'll start falling into sin. Because if you kick the rocks, he's going to eat your foot, Okay? And some of you can testify that, okay, in this room. Now, there's some of you that are stubborn because you're like, oh, he won't bite my foot. And I'm like, if you kick the rocks, he's going to bite your foot. And the hard, uh, stubborn people in the room go, okay. And they kick the rock and he bites your shoe. And then I have to pay for your shoe, okay? <laughs> Which I really don't think I should pay for your shoe when I told you don't kick the rocks. Anybody? Nobody? Okay. No. Okay. Um, here's the deal. Uh, God is a joy to be near, but he's also a terror to those who fear and disobey and run from him. Think about that. You know this. When we're running from God, he can be fearful when we disobey. Now, here's the deal. The comparison breaks down for us because when Jack starts acting bad, he goes to the utility room, okay? And you can't put God in the utility room, okay? So, anyway, I thought that was funnier than it was, but anyway. Um... If you're running from God because you're afraid of him, then you're not yet as afraid as you ought to be. Think about that. If you're running from God and you're not afraid of him, then you're missing God because, right? I mean, he's in charge of everything. And when we mock God as if he doesn't see us or we mock God as if God can't catch up with us, 
okay, that he's not aware of what's going on, right? Uh, we're presuming to think that we could outrun Jacks the German Shepherd. And God says, no, 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 hey, I am with you, and you should fear me, and you, as you love your own life, stop running and turn around. Because when you turn around, just like the prodigal, what happens? The prodigal, what happens? He puts his arms around you, and he loves you, right? And he cares for you, right? Isaiah chapter 8, verse 13, right? The Lord of hosts, let him be your fear, let him be your dread, and he will become a sanctuary. A proper fear of the Lord keeps us under the shadow of his wings where we need not be afraid. In fact, the fear of the Lord is accompanied by tremendous blessings. Listen to the Psalms here, right? Psalm 25, 14. The friendship of the Lord is those who fear him. God will become your friend as you fear him. The angel of the Lord, Psalm 34, 7, encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them, all right? Psalm 145, 19, he fulfills the desire of all who fear him. When we have a holy, reverent fear of the creator and sustainer of the universe, right, he moves towards us, right? His grace, his mercy is not heavy, but it is sweet and it brings contentment, it brings joy and the satisfaction that we crave. And so we see Proverbs 31, 30, charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Why should we praise such a woman? I would just say beginning, just first of all, is it just feels good. Doesn't it feel good to praise other people and honor them? Right? It really does. Uh, one of the things I struggle with is contentment in life. Right? I, I walk into a room, I immediately see what's wrong with it. Okay? Uh, some people would call that a spiritual gift. Other people would call that a curse. Right? Rather than being able to celebrate everything that I see that's going really well, which I note those too, but I see the thing that, oh, that could have been better, or that was off, or we could tweak here, or we could do that better. Right? Every environment I walk into, a department store, work, church, in my family, that's what I naturally see, a car, all those things. And yet at the same time, right, uh, people like me a lot better when I'm grateful. That was your chance, kids, right there, <laughs> right, honey, amen, all right? Not grumpy dad, but, but grateful dad. Here, here's the deal, C.S. Lewis said it this way. He said, praise is inner health made audible. Praise is inner health made audible. Here's what I know, we don't praise one another enough. We don't live in an honor culture, right? You, you, I've talked about this in the idea of honor. There are churches that honor, right? There are families that show honor. There are businesses and places that show honor, and those are powerful. Instead, we're cynical, and we're a little bit skeptical, as we should be because we've been hurt and we've been burned, but we, we don't move to show honor, certainly to those in authority, but we're, we're taught to go, hey, let me scrutinize everything, kind of like me walking in the room, Right? And, and this is what I would just say to you, praise is inner health made audible. And I, I've seen that verified over and over and over, but it's the cranks, right? It's the misfits, it's the scrooges of this world who seldom praise. And I would say they have an inner sickness of the soul that yields criticism and complaining and murmuring and grumbling and sarcasm and suspicion and general joylessness, right? And if that's you, quit being grumpy, right? I mean, who do you want to be around? And certainly as we frame it in the way we honor our moms or we honor the women in our life, it feels good to praise them. Ladies, how, how many of you would say, I am praised way too much and honored way too much in my home? Said no one ever, right? It's so difficult, all right? So difficult. Um, and I've seen that verified over and over. I just want to take uh, such people and sometimes myself, right, with the cranks uh, and say, hey, wake up. Uh, sure, there's rottenness in the world and there is brokenness in our world. And there is jacked upness in our world. Can we agree with that? There are things that are biblically broken, 
But hey, we live in a broken world. Christ, we're in the kingdom already, but not yet fully, right? We have Christ in us. We're going to see everything renewed in glory. It's going to be grand and glorious, but we live in a broken, fallen world. So what has God done? He's put lights. He's put ambassadors like you and I to be here to share that good news with others, all right? And I love this. For, for we, we, we have to give thanks. We can't be naive in that, all right? Why should else we praise a woman? Number two, it honors God. Why should you praise your wife? Why should you praise your mother? Why should you praise the mothers in your life? Not only does praising the women who fear, fears the Lord feel good, it also honors God, which is most important of all. Okay, think about this. There's a sense in which all praise, just like all boasting, okay, 1 Corinthians 1, 31, should be in the Lord. In other words, when you praise your mom or your wife or the women in your life, the woman in your life, you're actually honoring God. Now, I know some of us, we don't give praise, right? Because we don't want to puff other people up. We don't want them to get too big in their head, too big in their britches and think that they're all that. And so we withhold that. But what I would say to you, when we honor those in our life that God has designed and created and purposed, certainly specifically for motherhood, we're actually honoring him as the creator. Anybody? Nobody? One person. All right. That resonates with. Good. All right. I feel encouraged today. Okay. Um, There's a sense when all that praise helps. How about this? If you praise, Chrissy and I, if you praise one of our three girls and you go, hey, your girls are really like, man, they love Jesus and they're smart, they're beautiful, they're witty, they're strong, they have good character, they make wise choices. What do we do as parents? Like we grow like two or three inches, right? It's chest sticks out. You're like, that's right, right? Uh, no, no, no. We, we, we think, wow, that honors me. When you praise my kid, it honors me. When, when you praise your wife, it honors God. When you praise your mom, it honors God. All right? Really, really good. The third thing, it strengthens her hand in the Lord. The third reason to praise the moms in our lives who fear the Lord is to strengthen their hand. Okay? Think about that. They strengthen their hand, give encouragement. They have grit. They have perseverance to keep going and doing what is right and seeking the Lord. There's always going to be temptations that allure us away to fear the, from the fear of God. There's temptations to fear financial insecurity more than we fear God. There's temptations to fear rejection by our peers more than we fear God. Temptations to fear the lost time uh, spent in good deeds more than we fear God. And I would just say this to close that point is that we all need cheerleaders in our life. Right? We need cheerleaders in our life. We need people that will tell us the truth. Certainly when we're moving away from the fear of God in an unhealthy way. When we move towards sin, when we move toward things that don't please and honor God, all right, we need cheerleaders to say, no, 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 come this way. This is the right way. Character, this is the way to honor God. We need people to reinforce that in our lives. And I would just say this, husbands and children, this is uh, a word especially for you. Verse 28 of this chapter says what? Her children rise up and they call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Right? This is what beauty looks like. You, children, young people, think about this for a moment. All right? I'm going to go morbid and dark on you for a second. Okay? Kiddos, students, suppose your mom was killed in a car accident tomorrow. Yeah, I told you it was dark. Right? Your mom's killed in a car accident tomorrow. It's Monday. On Thursday, we're hosting her funeral. Okay? What are all the things you wish you would have said to your mom in order to honor your mom now versus then, right? Doesn't it crystal clear perspective like that? Just boom, right? Husbands, same way. Mary, look to your wife. What are the things that you would say to your bride, to the mom of your kids? What are the things you want to say if she were no more? What things would you go back and apologize? Uh, What what would you say to your wife? I I would say such things like, hey, why do I get upset over such stupid little things? Right? Why do things that are so petty bother me so much? Why do I make an issue of such non 
essentials, right? Like these are the things that I would move towards and I would just, I, I would say a lot more. I say it sometimes, but not enough. Hey, you're a good woman, right? You are a godly woman. You're a great example to our girls. I am grateful for that. To partner with you in ministry, to serve alongside of you is fantastic, right? And I love you. Come on, somebody, right? Yeah. How easy is that? How often do we do that? Or do we hold back that encouragement or that cheerleading, right? Because we're afraid that, oh, well, whatever, right? And now, l- let me just ask you this. Um, how can you identify a woman who fears the Lord? We're going to go real practical here in our remaining minutes, okay? How can you identify a woman who fears the Lord? What does it look like in action? Okay? Um, I'm going to mention four things here. First one is this. Uh, I would say she's not anxious about the future. Anybody struggle with anxiety? Come on, everybody. She's not anxious about the future. Look at uh, Proverbs 31:25. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. How in the world are you able to laugh at the time to come? Because you know who holds the future. You know who your anchor is. You know that you can be, he can be trusted and that he is good and he wants good for you. She's not anxious about the future. How about this? She doesn't buy into Satan's lie. She's not naive, Right? It's not like she's over here eating bonbons and, you know, taking bubble baths all the time, right? She's not naive. She, she knows what's going on. But she's not worried because she knows that God is bigger than Satan. She has a practical wisdom, right? Number two, she has a practical wisdom. Next slide. There you go. Proverbs 31, 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. All right? How beautiful is that? She's got a practical wisdom. Thirdly, she's strong, right? She is strong. Look at these verses here in Proverbs 31. Strength and dignity, again, are her clothing. She laughs at the time to come. She dresses herself with strengths and makes her arms strong, right? So she's in the gym every day doing biceps. Come on, anybody? No. No, she's strong, right? Why? Because she is spending time with her heavenly father, Morally, intellectually, emotionally, she is physically strong. The next one is that she lives for others, all right? Four things here that, are, that, that the wise man has chosen to celebrate. She lives for others. Look at this verse. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land, all right? This is a beautiful picture. And then lastly, I love that, she lives for the good of the needy, okay? I mean, this woman's a stud, right? She's amazing. She lives for the good of the needy. She opens her hand to the poor and she reaches out her hands to the needy. Now, here's what I just wanna say over all moms today. You're doing a great work, right? Do you believe that? Look, look, look at your mom or the woman you came with today and just look at her and say, hey, you're doing a good work, okay? A few of you are doing that, right? There were some awkward laughs out there. You're doing a good work. I love what Galatians says. Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season, what happens? We will reap if we do not give up. Perseverance, people. Grit. Right? Amazing. Moms, here's what I want you to do. Would you just stand up all across the room, moms? Cool. We'll make you uncomfortable here for a minute. Again, just want to look you in the eyes and say you're doing a great work. Right? You're doing a great work. We love you, we're proud of you, we're for you. We wanna see God do amazing and incredible things in and through your ministry and your life. And we just wanna take these last few minutes just to pray over you. Okay, so if you're traveling with your kiddos, great. Kids, 
dads, extended family, this is a time just to lay hands on your mom or the mother figure in your life. Really, this is a time just to begin to move. We're gonna pray as a church family. If somebody doesn't have anybody, look at them, say, hey, can I touch you first? And then touch them, okay? <laughs> Lord Jesus, we thank you for moms. We thank you for their lives and the gifts that they are to us. The seen and the unseen sacrifices that they make in each of our lives. From years ago to even now, God, we just give you praise for them. And we just honor that you created, you, you created the heavens and the earth. You created man. You said it was not good for him to be alone. You created woman. You put them together. You said, go forth and multiply. And God, we, we just thank you that family is your design. That moms are your design today. So God, help us to honor them. Help us to see them. Help us not to blow by them. Help us not take advantage of them. Oh God, but would you help us to love and honor them? And just right where you're at, with your hand on your mom or maybe a mother figure in your life or maybe just even a complete stranger today, would you play blessing over that woman in front of you? Pray a prayer of blessing that God would meet with them, God would speak to them, God would use them in whatever season of life Oh, God, we pray for that. Thank you, Jesus, for your gift and sacrifice. Amen. As we take the next couple of moments um, to respond, um, we're going to pass some baskets, a hard time to receive uh, the offering. Um, and just an opportunity for us to put our money where our mouth is. If we believe in and trust in Jesus and an opportunity for us to be more and more like our Heavenly Father who has given generously to us that we would trust Him with our finances. Hey, if you're new, um, man, the connection card. We would love to just be able to follow up and pray with you and help you take your next steps in following Jesus. So please put that in there. We have communion available on the sides of the room. Uh, if you want to take a few minutes, just remember the sacrifice that was made for the forgiveness of our sins. And then we're going to worship um, Jesus in singing. So uh, would you guys stand? And we will uh, begin doing those things. Cross has broken, I am 
forgiven The King of kings calls me his own Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever Jesus Christ, my living hope free t-shirts. We're moving in a couple weeks. Uh, we're trying to clean house. Anybody wear a small out there? Come on. Anybody? Anybody? Right there. Beautiful. Uh, anybody wear a medium out there? Come on, somebody. Come on. Oh, uh, yeah. Anybody wear a large? People are like, Ogie. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Pastor Jeff, Kim, can I honor you today? Can I do that? Can I ask you guys to come up here? I'm so sorry. I know. I saw that look. I noticed that look, Kim. I know what that means. So I'm so sorry to embarrass you this morning. Or, um, Yeah, please join me. Um, you may know uh, Jeff and Kim Switzer. Uh, Pastor Jeff uh, just retired and his wife. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you. Um, Pastor uh, Life Church Round Rock, where we are moving, right? So, yeah. And so uh, a new season of retirement, right? Exciting. Grandkids in Dallas, I understand. That's good. Um, I've told this body, Jeff, um, not happenstance, right? We know that. But just meeting in Smoky Moe's that day and talking about some of your story. And Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Cat's out of the bag now. Um, I just want to say thank you. Just a gratitude to you, to your bride, and your faithful years of service and ministry. Uh, just to recognize that, to honor you in front of this family, and just to pray for you guys in your next season of ministry. Yeah. Is there anything we can pray specifically for either one of you or your family? I know it's hard on the spot. Continued good health. 
That's good. Good health in the next season, in the journey. Yeah. Um, asking God to reveal what he wants for them in this next season as they head into this transition of retirement. That's fun. And that uh, Kim would be able to put up with Jeff if you didn't hear that. And all the, all the men said amen. So um, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you to step here. We're going to pray over you guys today. And just with a heart of gratitude, want to honor you and just say thank you for, um, man, just your kindness to me and the kindness to our church family. We're grateful for that because we know that you had a lot to do with us being able to come and to rent the space. So yeah. thank you for that. Cool. Come church family. Let's lay hands. As before, as we often do as a family, spiritual families, just pray over brothers and sisters in Christ. We want to pray for Jeff. We want to pray for Kim, uh, the things that I've mentioned. Uh, and as I pray out loud, you pray. So, Father in heaven, we just thank you for Jeff and Kim today. We thank you for the fact that they know you and they love you. And God, uh, we thank you for just their pastoral ministry together. They serve the body of Christ in Round Rock and Greater Austin and given their life to ministry and to people and to pastoring and shepherding. God, I know I have a special place in my heart for pastors and their wives. And so, God, I just, I pray uh, in this next season, it would be the best yet. I pray that you give them supernatural fruit. I pray that you would continue to give them provision, that you would give them opportunity in incredible ways to God, just to see supernatural things happen with their kids and with their grandkids. God, would you grow them closer together? Would you give them greater kingdom harvest and impact and fruit than in any other season of their life? God, give them joy, give them wisdom, give them protection, give them health, we pray. We thank you for their friendship. We thank you for their partnership in the gospel. And God, we just say over them that we love them and we're grateful for their lives and all God's people said this morning. Amen. 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 Church family, we love you. Mark, do you have anything for us? It's my turn. Yeah. Uh, have a great week. Prayer team is up front. If you need prayer this morning, um, we'll see you next week. God bless.